I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 34. Let's focus on verses 5 through 7. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him, that is Moses, there, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy unto the thousandth generation, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and then to the fourth generation. Exodus 34, verses 5 through 7. You know, in Western culture, the number 13 is considered an unlucky number, as superstitions go. And the Jewish mindset considers the number 13 to be blessed. And here's why. A couple of reasons. In Hebrew, there are no numbers per se, so every letter is ascribed a numerical value. For instance, the letter Aleph, A, is, would be number one. So A is number one. And 13, then, if you take the letters and you start adding them together, they're numerical values, and they'll come up with a sum. And so 13 is the numerical value of Ahava, which is a Hebrew word for love. And in the Shema, right, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Well, in the Shema, God is described as being one. Well, the Hebrew word for one is Echad. The numerical value for Echad is also 13. So both love and the oneness of God are also numerical values of 13. I know it's a bit mystic, I admit it. And there's some people that are really into Bible codes, you know. They go crazy trying to reckon numbers and words and adding things together, looking for codes in the Bible to give them maybe some kind of an advantage in life. I don't know. Much of which I think is just odd. But the only reason that I mention it is because God announces himself to Moses in 13 spiritual ideas concerning his divine nature. So ironically, perhaps, but the one who is known as Echad, which has a numer numerical value of 13, is also announcing himself by a list of 13. So let's just go through these ideas one by one. The Lord, the Lord God, that's how he announces himself. This is my name. I'm the Lord, the Lord God. Adonai, Adonai. Uh, Adonai denotes God in his mercy. The repetition was traditionally considered to mean that God is merciful. I'm not just God. I'm God, God. I'm Adonai, Adonai. I am merciful before a man sins, and I am merciful even after he sins. <clears throat> Number two, I am God. I am Adonai, Adonai. I am the Lord, the Lord, God. In Hebrew, the word for the Lord, obviously, is Adonai, but the Hebrew word for God is El. <clears throat> and El is the Almighty Lord of the universe, ruler of nature and of mankind. He says that He is merciful. God is full of affectionate sympathy for the sufferings and the miseries of human frailty. He says He is gracious. He assists and He helps consoling the afflicted and raising up the oppressed. He is long-suffering. The Lord is not hastening to punish the sinner, but He offers sinners opportunities to repent. Those opportunities aren't given forever indefinitely, or else He's not holy, but there comes a point where His long-suffering will end and the judgment begins, but He doesn't just immediately judge is the whole point of long-suffering. Number six, he is abundant in goodness. That is, he grants his gifts and his blessings beyond what men deserve. He is truth. He is eternally true to himself and to his word, keeping his mercy for the thousandth generation. The Bible says that'd be number eight. He remembers the righteousness of the ancestors, and he reserves reward and recompense to the, even the remotest descendants who would turn from their sin and turn to him. He keeps his mercy throughout the generations. 
Number nine, he forgives iniquity. He bears with the indulgence and the failings of man, and by forgiveness he restores them to purity. Number ten, he says that he forgives transgression. Evil deeds spring from the malice and the rebellion against God, and yet not only does he forgive iniquity, that is our shortcomings, but even the sins which we choose to to commit against him. The Bible says that he judges sin. You see, shortcomings by refusal to heed or ignorance of God's word, the Lord then judges. Number 12, he will by no means clear the guilty. In Hebrew, it literally means acquitting the repentant, but not acquitting the unrepentant. That means that there is a heaven and there is a hell. I want you to think about it because there's some who would try to say to you that there is no hell. No, there is. And, and forgiveness is available to anyone who would turn from their sin and receive it by surrendering to the truth of the Messiah. And then, of course, lastly, number 13, he says, visiting upon the children. This relates only to the consequences and not the punishment of a man's sin upon his descendants. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Think about these things today, and check us out at groundworksministries.com.